Hello everyone and welcome to Tomorrow's Tech brought to you by 3.digital. It's our goal to increase visibility of entrepreneurs and enterprise leaders who are harnessing technology, driving innovation and enabling business growth. Today we welcome on our show Catherine Foster, who's the former Senior Director of Xbox Games Marketplace and Microsoft Online. Now she's left the rain in Seattle and moved over to the Sunshine Coast with her family and she's now driving her venture, Macrodata Digital Solutions. So welcome on the show Catherine. Thank you, thank you for having me. I'd love to ask you first, what value proposition are you bringing to the future innovation hub and startup capital that's proposed to be the Sunshine Coast? Mm. Well, I think I'm bringing a lot of uh, experience of what not to do as well as- a, That's um, very useful. <laughs> yeah, as well as some of the things that have worked out in, in my career. I, I started with Microsoft as a developer on Windows Update. And one of my first projects was uh, helping Microsoft build their first, uh, um, first party or owned data center. And uh, learned, learned a lot, probably learned a lot more about what you didn't do than what you did do in, in that context. But uh, I've run many businesses uh, or built many businesses that are internet based. And uh, obviously data centers and, and having a uh, digital distributed um, data model and, and architecture is critical to, to those types of businesses. So um, Macro Data Digital Solutions is looking to bring data centers to uh, Queensland and doing it in a uh, kind of eco-friendly as well as uh, self-sustaining sort of way. And the idea is that we'd be bringing true tier four data centers with active failover that uh, would attract not just Australian businesses, but also uh, multinational companies that want to have a presence in Australia. It's, it's exciting what, you, what you're progressing towards. Mm. Now, how did your experience in the US with Microsoft, for example, lead you to starting this venture and having the confidence to do so? The confidence to do so, I guess. It, is it confidence or is it just the willingness to keep going and not give up in Persistent. the face yeah. of adversity? I think that that's been the, the key to my success. I mm. also have a, a, a pretty broad risk profile. I'm willing to take risks on that others might not. And uh, I, I don't see failure as bad. I think that failure is part of the process. I, I suppose yet another trait that I'm good at is attracting people, the types of people that you need to have around you that are, are more capable and, and experts in, in the right type of areas. So when you come together, as a team, you know, the, the whole is greater than the sum You're of the parts. You're stronger for it. Yeah. And I understand that you had a lot to do with setting up a data center in Canyon Park, is that yes. right? Yes, yeah, that's right. That was, that was Microsoft's first uh, um, fully owned data center. Okay. And it was uh, there for MSN, so MSN was launching with uh, MSN Internet Access and uh, um, Windows Update uh, became the first non-Windows uh, service that, that uh, was hosted out of the data center. My, my job was actually making sure that we had good performance, that we could distri distribute the fixes uh, around the globe, and that it could be done both at, at security at all layers of the OSI model, if you will. So physical security all the way up to the application level security. So you're building a, a data center here and it's going to be eco-friendly. Mm. I think the big question is what impact will that have for Queensland and the country? Well, what we've seen in, in um, tech communities around the globe is that a data center and or an internet exchange are the, the, those anchor type of uh, capabilities that allow for tech growth. The being close enough to where the data is being stored and processed is important so that uh, a, as you're growing this and, and designing it, you, you have unlimited access for the people that, that need to have access to it. You also create this sub ecosystem of support. So when you build a data center, you're also supplying all the, the physical cables and, and uh, you know, air conditioning, cooling, heating, all of the That's things that, involved. Yeah, that you need to do. And the data center's two major um, cost drivers or, or consumption pieces are energy and then internet access, you know, both local and, and, and across the globe. So you bring in expertise around that because they'll need to actually work on fixing problems as they arise or design the initial systems. And, and businesses like to, to gather together because it, it creates a synergy and, and an economy of scale. And a data center then brings that kind of tech. Uh, a hub? A hub, yeah. A, a tech hub. Now, and this is made possible also by the uh, undersea fiber optic cable that's landing in 2020 at the Sunshine Coast, mm. as we've heard from guests such as Ron Hill. But can this data center also be leveraged by New Zealand and countries, Pacific countries? A absolutely. I think that's the, uh, the, the, the value of this undersea cable is that it's connecting um, LA and Singapore, Hong Kong, Tokyo, Sydney, and 
Richidor, right? So it, it's putting Southeast Queensland on the map as far as uh, being a tech hub. It's putting that, the, the capability as, as kind of a first level provider. And one of the opportunities that we have is we get to create that, that ecosystem. We can be thoughtful about how it grows. Uh, I had a lot of exposure to the Silicon Valley. I had a lot of exposure to Seattle, to Boston, to Houston. And I saw these communities grow. And I'd say that the Silicon Valley is the model we don't want. People can't afford to live there. You know, people are spending 70% of, of probably two incomes to be able to, to, support, to, to afford to live there and minimize their commute, which means they're, they're, they're house rich and, and life poor. Well, I think, and you can vouch for this, that the quality of life in Sunshine Coast is, is well, is, is, is high. Yeah. It's amazing. And this data center could serve as that anchor mm. for many other businesses. And just to confirm, you see that the data center can be a value-added conduit for not only enterprises, but startups as well? Absolutely. So when you have a data center and you have a lot of um, kind of that deep infrastructure, you have excess. So startups can can um, benefit off the back of the excess. So let's say that uh, we've got multiple cables coming into the cable landing station. There might be excess um, Internet capability. Well, startups might be able to pick that up for, for less expensively than they would if they went into Brisbane or Sydney because you know, supply versus demand is, is at play here. With this serving as, or bringing so much value to the region, how could Australia stand in its own way? Mm. I think that it, it's hard to know what you don't know. And uh, the high technology has created a, a different way um, or, or nuances to that traditional business model that you, you, you can't really understand until you've done it. You, you have to learn as you go. And we, we need to be open. We need to make sure we're really thoughtful about how we want our, our technology to grow. And when I think about the Sunshine Coast specifically, places where you might want to put a data center or places where you might want to put technical teams might not fit into their traditional thinking around zoning and, and how, how you build those types of buildings. So the, the, it, it really needs to be a partnership between the, the, the private sector and the public sector and, and, and how we maintain it and an open dialogue around the, the values and the benefits and why we might want to put a data center where we used to have a chook farm, right? You know, or, yeah. or whatever that looks like so, so that it works out. And what help do you now need moving forward, whether it be from entrepreneurs, investors, uh, council, government, what's needed to get this further yeah. off the ground? Well, I'll start with the easy one, which is council and government. Okay. And, that, and that's, uh, it's easy because I, um, as I'm going through the, the process of building the data centers, I understand that conversation. And, and it is, you know, having the conversation around zoning and, and, and let, let's do our due diligence in the process, but not take too long and, and be open and, and have call in the experts if we need to to understand you know what the request is being asked for and what the outcome of, of it is so let, let's not make it a two-year process let's try to make it you know happen in a few months absolutely um, I think from from entrepreneurs it's the you know take take advantage of of the capabilities that are being enabled and and the opportunities as, as they come and uh, you know the the that cap the the wet cable isn't going to be live until you know early uh, 2020 but what, what does it mean? Start thinking now about, you know, how, how, how we can leverage that and, and, and connect into it. it. Absolutely. Yeah. And then from, from investors, it's about a, a different thinking in, in investment. The U.S. definitely understands how to invest in high tech. They, they get that it's a, it, it, it's a risky um, enterprise, but it doesn't mean you don't uh, embrace the risk. It means yes. that if invest early, they, and every investment firm has a, a formula, but the one thing that all the formulas have in common is you invest in the right people. So put 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 the support in the people and and help you know surround them with with what they would need to be successful. But appreciate the fact that not every per startup that comes through the door that sounds like a great idea is going to be successful. So have an investment strategy that takes yes. into account that a few of them will be successful, and that's what funds the business. And sometimes you might have to, to take on a, a little bit more risk or something you don't understand if, if it can be explained to you. Well, thank you, Catherine, for joining us on the show and sharing your insights into how this data center can serve as an anchor, not only for startups, but scale-ups and enterprises too for the region. It's certainly going to be significant. So thank you. Yeah. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to be able to talk to it and be part of uh, your platform. I'm, I'm very excited with what uh, 3.digital is doing. And we look forward to uh, keeping track of your progress. And thank you to our viewers for joining in today. We encourage you to follow us on our 3.digital LinkedIn page and stay tuned for the next episode of Tomorrow's Tech.
presented by 3.digital.